All right, man, peace. So, brothers, with the advent of social media, the mainstream liberal sports media has more competition than they've ever had before. And what that does is it puts the onus on breaking the story or being at the forefront of any breaking news. That leads to such competitive fervor that now you have many of these pundits, these analysts, these prognosticators on television making up stories, concocting narratives to act as if they have insight that they do not even have. And that makes them prone to being manipulated themselves. The manipulators have become the manipulated, especially with shrewd operators like a Kawhi Leonard, who obviously used Chris Carter and <laughs> may have used other reporters in the mainstream liberal sports media to throw out false notions, false narratives, to throw the Lakers and Toronto or even other teams off the track while he was able to streamline his modus operandi. And it was a beautiful thing. And to be quite honest with you, all this situation showed over the past week is why it is so necessary for there to be cats who make videos on social media, whether it be on YouTube, on Facebook, on wherever you do your thing and you dispense information. Because we act as a check and a balance to the mainstream shills that we see on television. One of them being Mr. Chris Broussard, or as I call him, Chris X, or my new name for him, Chris Little White Lie Broussard. This cat lies so much about his so-called sources when it's obvious either his sources are lying to him or two, his sources are not very good, or number three, which is most likely, he don't have any damn sources. But he's not the only one. Because there were reporters on television lying their asses off over this Kawhi Leonard situation. And there were only two reporters who got it right. There were only two. And what they had in common is that neither one of them are fanboys when it comes to Kawhi and many of the other top stars in the NBA. And that's why they were able to assess the situation with a sense of level-headedness. And that was Skip Bayless and also Jason Whitlock. Now, Skip Bayless got it for the most part correct. He was in the ballpark. He was one of the few reporters on television or analysts on TV who gave the Clippers a real chance. Jason Whitlock actually got it exactly right. And I'll be doing a video about that in the near future to just highlight how correct the brother was and how astute he was in his evaluation on why it was taking Kawhi Leonard so long. And Skip Bayless is also going to lightly touch on it in this segment right here. But I just think that it's very important for me to do a video like this to help brothers understand, number one, why you should not be a fan of anyone. And number two, why you should do your own research. And number three, why you should be patient when you need to be patient to allow that flower to sprout out of the ground before you make an evaluation. When you rush to judgment, you're going to stumble and fall. As we see from Mr. Chris Little White Lie Broussard, as well as a bevy of others, Jalen Rose as well. Or as I call him, Jalen, I'm on that Molly Rose. <laughs> so anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. We're up to like 99.9 .9 Lakers. People have told me 85%, 90%. That's what people have told me. Okay. I, I still think it will be the Lakers. Okay, so good. you're up. Chris Broussard said, I still think that it's going to be the Lakers when it's all said and done. Is that wishful thinking or is that you actually utilizing some media investigative skills and you're reporting, Chris Broussard, your alleged reporting? Once again, brothers, whenever you become a fan, you start to inject your propaganda more than actual empirical data. And what you're going to lose is a lot of credibility, which is what Chris Broussard has lost. And it's not just the people or the viewers who understand this. I was looking at Chris Haynes on Instagram and he also mentioned how there was so much misinformation put out there. And it was obvious who he was talking about and what he was talking about. Not just Chris Broussard, but many of these other pseudo reporters out there who don't do any real work. They're just competing with one another to see who can make up the bigger lie. Because what all these reporters know is that nothing is going to come out of the Kawhi camp because Kawhi tells no one anything. He does not tell anything to anyone. And that is what has made this story or this narrative so difficult to develop for the mainstream media who's so accustomed to being able to contact a homeboy here, an usher there, an assistant coach, a trainer, a secretary who overheard the conversation. They can do all these things normally and they could drop down on these players and leave these players confused because a lot of them, I mean, just to be honest with you, they think and they act like high school girls and they don't understand the power of their words. And what happens when you have diarrhea mouth? Kawhi Leonard has none of those issues whatsoever, and neither does his Uncle Dennis. One of the, one of the most important things that Kawhi Leonard seems to have mastered is, <laughs> is that he grasps that 
for situations of great import, you keep it to yourself. There's no greater counselor than you. Hopefully, the Most High will put wise people in your life who you can trust, but that's very rare. You have to learn and understand how to trust yourself, and Kawhi Leonard knows how to do that. So that's why the media demonizes him so much, because he does not fit into the normal paradigm of the black athlete. The guy who runs around telling everybody all his information and uh, overly glorifying his mother like she's a god or a deity, as opposed to just loving her like he's supposed to and honoring her as he's supposed to. So it's very difficult for them to, to pin Kawhi down. But Chris Broussard, just to get back to the point, he really made an ass of himself, as did Jalen Rose, as did many others in the mainstream media. 99.9 Lakers? People have told me 85%, 90%. That's what people have told you that, Chris Broussard? Who told you that if Kawhi Leonard's not saying anything and neither is his uncle? Someone in the Lakers front office told you that? Who, Magic Johnson? <laughs> I mean, that's the only person dumb enough to say, I believe that Kawhi is coming here and it's a 90% chance because we had a great conversation. And I would love to have been a fly on the wall in that room with Magic Johnson talking to Kawhi Leonard and his uncle. I guarantee you, Magic did 90% of the talking. I think that Magic confused the chances of Kawhi Leonard coming to the Lakers with the percentage of the time that he spoke in the conversation. It's not a 90% chance that Kawhi was coming to the Lakers. It was that you were talking 90% of the time in the damn interview. People have told me. Okay. And so you I'm think... 90 only 90? Yeah. So you're giving 90, the Clippers a 10% three, shot? No, I think Toronto. I think it would be a one-year deal with the rap. If he doesn't, I think he's going to the Lakers. If he doesn't, I think it's maybe a one and one Okay, so Now, brothers, you notice Chris Broussard is talking about what he thinks. He's not talking about what he heard. He's not talking about what he was told. So basically, he's not doing anything more than what I do. I just approximate based on what I hear from, from the television or from the news over the wire <laughs> on the internet and I just piece it together myself. He's trying to do the same thing but they're paying him to actually provide real information. So that's where the trouble comes in because he has to compete with people like Ramona Shelburne and Brian Windhorse and other people who tend to, no disrespect to him, have better information than he does and I guess that means they have better sources than he does. I'm not quite sure if this brother has any sources at all because I can't I can't remember the last story that he broke or that he actually said something that was correct. But I think are over I, and out. Not, for the most part, yeah. For the most part? I'm gonna leave him some yeah, but they, I'm Lakers. 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 Did you, brother, do you see how he accentuated the Lakers? That's what he wanted to happen. That's not what he heard was going to happen because he's a LeBron James fan. And that's why I state that the LeBron James fan base in the media is extremely toxic and they just don't get it. As most people who are toxic, they just don't get why others find them toxic because it's just inherent within them to be that way, at least about particular topics. And it's very clear to me that what the Kawhi Leonard uh, base did or the Kawhi Leonard representation did was they used Chris Carter to dispense information to keep people at bay. Because Chris Carter is another LeBron James fanboy. As a matter of fact, on his show, First Things First, he even stated that Kawhi Leonard and his team asked him what he thought Kawhi should do. And of course, Chris Carter said, oh, sign with the Lakers. Now, why the hell would Kawhi Leonard want to sign with the Lakers when he can get more money elsewhere, more prestige elsewhere, and he already has two titles? Why would he join up with LeBron? Why would he do that? That makes no sense whatsoever. And him being a part of that atmosphere is not even conducive to what we know about Kawhi Leonard. That being that he's a laid back guy who likes to, you know, he likes to put in his work and start from the bottom and earn everything that he gets. That's what we know about him. So had he signed with the Lakers, it certainly would have been a departure from the Kawhi Leonard that that has been shown to us over the course of these past eight, nine years. So what he did by signing with the Clippers was consistent with what we've seen from him. So that's how you know once again that Kawhi and his team were playing a lot of these clowns in the mainstream media for fools, which is what they are. What percent do you give the Clippers? What percent? Any? One. One percent? Two percent. Two percent. Yeah. We got a two percent. So we, we have it on record that Chris Broussard gave the Clippers two percent. Why is that? Because in his mind, he could not fathom why Kawhi Leonard would want to sign with the Clippers as opposed to the object of his affection, of his ardor, LeBron James. I mean, just like me. I'm saying Lakers 
Raptors tiny chance, Clippers even tinier. Mm-hmm. Actually, the Clippers got skim milk chance. Mm. They got no fat up in. No fat. No fat. Zero. zero. So you're a zero. Yeah. And he said. When is the last time that Shannon has been corrected by any prediction whatsoever? I mean, basketball, football, boxing. When is the last time that he said something that came out correct? Two. Yeah. Okay. But he's under the impression, like I said, if you go to Toronto, for the simple fact, everybody's a free agent after this year. Mm. So at the at worst, he was only signing a two-year deal of one and one. Mm. Well, it's very clear that wherever Kawhi planned on going, he wanted to sign a long-term deal. And that's why he tried to plot to have Pascal Siakam traded. Like, Kawhi really was going in with his Machiavellian tactics. He was... <laughs> I mean, that, that dude was no joke. He was trying to have... I believe he was trying to have Pascal Siakam and Van Fleet. Supposedly, he wanted to, them to be traded to OKC for Paul George and I think Russell Westbrook. So, I'm not sure if Kyle Lowry was also going to be a thorn in that deal. But Kawhi was, was attempting to make Toronto a Canadian version of the best players in the NBA from California. Who knows? But that would have been an unbelievable blockbuster of a deal had uh, Ujiri attempted to make that work. And I think that it probably could have worked if Masai Ujiri did not have cold feet. But I understand why he didn't do it because you don't want to bring Westbrook into a winning environment. You just don't. Well, you got a AD. We got AD now. Mm. Lakers. Mm. Ninety-four point five. Now mm. you keep on. Now I might be. I might be a hundred by the end of the show. Really? I started at ninety-four. Point okay. Five. I'm still giving the Clippers a thirty percent shot. Thirty. Yeah. Thirty percent shot because the longer the clock ticks, the better their chances. Absolutely. Once again, because Skip Bayless is not a fanboy when it comes to LeBron James. He was able to assess the situation. And, of course, he's also not a fanboy when it comes to Kawhi. So he sat back and he was methodical with his assessment as opposed to leading with his emotions like Chris, Little White Lie, Broussard, <laughs> and LaShannon Sharp James. Because those are some powerful, persuasive personalities. And I throw on top of that Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams. And I believe they have been in number two's ear. I think they've had their say in Again, I'm sure there's a lot of negative recruiting going on about we got stability, they got sitcom in their front office. We got drama free, they got the drama king. And I'm sure they are telling them all the stories of all the drama LeBron has caused. No doubt about it. Because just playing in that area, in the LA area, I'm sure that Pat Beverly and Lou Williams have heard a lot about what's really going on in the Laker locker room. Especially from some of those young boys who are no longer there causes a lot of it wherever he goes. Am I right about no. that? Absolutely, 100% right, sir. Yes, he does. And I'm sure they're telling number two, do you want to be number three to LeBron and eight? Ding. I know you say he's telling me I'm going to step back, but still, it's LeBron's team. It's not going to be number two's team. It's not going to be AD's team. It's LeBron's Los Angeles uh, Lakers. Why would the Clippers have... Okay, so brothers, now we're just going to evaluate Mr. Jalen Rose, a.k.a. Jalen Amonat Mali, Rose's assertion that Kawhi Leonard was going to re-sign with the Toronto Raptors, and he claimed that he gave it a 99% chance, <laughs> according to his sources, his alleged sources, that Kawhi Leonard was going to re-sign back with the Toronto Raptors. I believe that he claimed it was going to be a two-year deal, one year and another option year. So let's see what he has to say here. It was about a year and a half ago on first take that you went on the air and you said that you believed Kawhi Leonard would never play for the San Antonio Spurs again. Not too many people took that seriously at the time. Turned out, of course, to be absolutely right. I know you have spent a lot Yeah, but there was nothing deep or insightful about that. Anyone who paid attention would understand that Kawhi Leonard was never going to play for the San Antonio Spurs again. I did a video around that time period stating that Kawhi Leonard would eventually demand a trade, which is what happened. Because after, after Greg Popovich decided that he was going to declare the code red on Kawhi and utilize his lieutenants of Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, Kawhi was going to be done because Kawhi's one of those cats who don't have time for the bullshit. <laughs> Kawhi's like, if anyone's going to be Machiavellian here, it's going to be me. I'll be the only one here utilizing chess tactics. Thank you, sir. Her, her, her. <laughs> Out of this day, talking to a lot of people, what are you here? So, as you just saw, Kawhi Leonard is in Toronto. What I'm 99% hearing, 
-hmm. is that Kawhi Leonard will be returning to Toronto and signing a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. Just completed his eighth season. That's going to put him at 10 years. That puts him in position to get the largest available maximum deal for a player of his What we just saw is Jalen Rose lie. He lied to the people because he did not hear that from anyone, or at least anyone reputable. What Jalen Rose did here, in my view, was basically give his own hot take. This is something that he would tell uh, Jacoby on the show Jalen and Jacoby. And it will come off as an insider speaking because what Jalen stated, for all intents and purposes, makes sense. At least it would make sense for the average player. But what we know about Kawhi Leonard is that he does not particularly care about money. I'm sure that he values money as we all do. You need money to live. But he's not going to let you control him with money, which is what the owners thought they were going to be able to do once they established to players that you can make your most money if you stay with the franchise. The players basically have, have said to themselves, whether I'm making $250 million over the next five years or $200 million, I can't spend all this money in my lifetime anyway, as long as I'm doing with my money what I'm supposed to be doing with it, investing it properly, so on and so forth. So you're not going to dictate to me where I stay either way. Kawhi showed that when he left San Antonio in the first place. They could have paid him the most money, but he wanted out. So why would he stay in Toronto for the most money? It's clear that money is not the main galvanizing force in his life. Now, I do believe that he gave Toronto a chance to keep him if they would have executed the trade that he demanded them to make. Masai Ujiri decided that he was not going to, he was not going to adhere to Kawhi Leonard's demands. So he moved on to the Clippers. The Clippers were more desperate than the Raptors. But, but just getting back to the point, it's very obvious that Jalen Rose made this up. Tenure. And the wow. And all of this is extraordinarily significant. I and mean, that's an important piece of this to make sure everyone is aware of that that 10th year does increase the value of the Supermax it would then be eligible for. And so, again, this is what you're hearing from people close to the situation. And if you notice, I'm I wonder if Jalen Rose's source on this story was Molly Karam. Because we know that whatever Molly says, Jalen Rose has to follow. And if you notice, Molly Karam's name or her new name is Molly Karam Rose. And I tell you brothers this all the time. <laughs> if you see a woman and she gets married and she has that hyphenated name, that marriage is not going to last long. Because that's her way of showing the man that I'm only with you for the moment. If she's not even willing to change her last name to that man's last name after he made that commitment and it's, it's difficult enough for modern day men to marry a female and she's not even going to change her last name, that's a major, major red flag. So it would not surprise me if we hear certain rumblings about Jalen Rose and Molly Karam in the relatively near future. I never vacillated because these are the same people that I've been talking to the entire time. And when you hear the reports, especially when you do what we do, it's easy to kind of get off of your square. But I've been consistent. And as you know me, I like to measure twice and cut once. I just dropped the mic. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. I don't know what that means. Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose said he just dropped the mic. No, brother, you just dropped the ball. That's what you did. But once again, brother, I just wanted to make this video so that we pay very close attention to these media members, not just in sports, but overall. There are so many lies that are dispensed through the media, both misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation, of course, is erroneous info that is dispensed to the public by accident. Disinformation is erroneous information that is purposefully dispensed to the public to cause confusion or to execute or utilize misdirection so that the people don't know what's going on as you try to achieve another goal that no one knows about. For example, while the media was utilizing misinformation, Kawhi Leonard was utilizing disinformation. <laughs> so Kawhi, um, he definitely deserves a lot of credit. And the media certainly deserves a lot of scrutiny when we look at how they flub this entire storyline. But anyway, I will salute Mr. Chris Little White Lie Broussard and Mr. Jalen, I'm on that Molly Rose when they start getting their act together. Peace.